Poetry has always captured the hearts and the imagination of the American people. It is an art that holds up a mirror to the nation's consciousness. As Shelley once said, poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. We're going to talk about poetry tonight. Robert Penske is here. He is serving his third term as the Port Laureate of the United States. He is the author of several books of poems, including Jersey Rain, which has just been published. He's also an acclaimed essayist and translator of Dante. George Plimpton is here. He is the editor of the Paris Review, a literary quarterly which has devoted its current issue to poetry. Richard Howard is here, also of the Paris Review, a Pulitzer Prize winning poet and translator. I am pleased to have them all here. All of this, George, is all about poetry. <laughs> well, not Tell quite. Tell me how it not, came into being. Well, it came into being because uh, Richard here, the poetry had uh, uh, selected uh, such a large number of uh, very worthy poems that we suddenly realized that he was driving out or to the sidelines, so to speak, yeah. uh, fiction, artwork, essays. And so we finally decided the only thing to do was to ha call a moratorium, which we did about a year and a half ago. So... For a year More and a half. saying, don't send us any no, more poems. You, and we would send back little slips saying, we're terribly sorry. Uh, <laughs> we, we can't do anything about this. We'll have to wait for a year and a half or so yeah. before we can begin, begin accepting poems again. And uh, so we decided uh, to have this massive uh, poetry issue. April is the so-called Poetry Month, which was established by the Academy of American Poets some five years ago. And we thought it would be appropriate to have this enormous issue come out in April. It has, so we, we published, I think, 69 poets are in this particular issue. But we had to buttress it with all sorts of other things to make it seem less like uh, an anthology. So it's got all sorts of strange things yeah. in there. But also some conversations about poetry, too. It's got, uh, yes, it has, it has uh, three interviews. The Paris Review is particularly well known for its interviews uh, right. with literary people, Hemingway, Frost, Eliot, and so forth. And some, in this many issue, of them done by you. Some. And in this issue, we have uh, Robert Bly, and Jeffrey Hill and uh, Derek Mahon, uh, three very <coughs> distinguished, very Carolyn interesting. Kaiser. Yeah. And Carolyn Kaiser, four, I guess. Carolyn Kaiser, yeah. absolutely right. And, um, and also, we did, we did something that I think uh, horrified Richard when uh, we suggested <laughs> this it. This was we, all done without my knowing. <laughs> best to wake behind the poetry at his back. <laughs> we made up a list of eight uh, titles and uh, drawn from motion pictures from... Uh, the past from some just absolutely made up on the spot and sent these titles to a number of poets to see if they would write poems to um, the title. Strange titles like uh, Lavatory in a Cathedral, uh, an empty, yes, I would say. <laughs> empty surfboard on a flat sea, things like that. And, and, and they uh, would write to that title. And they were like a poet laureate. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> there were some people that were rather upset, I think. We got some, uh, poor Richard got some letters from some of his friends saying, what on earth is going on here? <laughs> what, have you gone mad over on 77th Street? <laughs> and, uh, but many of them did. And then, to our delight, Robert wrote this wonderful essay for us on occasional poetry, uh, yeah. in which he talked a little bit about writing poems for a special occasion, which indeed this exercise was. Yeah. Well, in fact, you uh, occasionally read poems on the news hour. That's true. That are key to special occasions. If they aren't already occasional, I make them occasional. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Port Laureate, what is it about poetry that um, makes it so... I'm waiting for the adjective. <laughs> and, well, I, I was saying makes it so central. meaningful to you. Central. Central. Central, central uh, was the right word. It's an art that takes for its medium the reader's body. It's the individual's voice. Whoever says the poem aloud becomes the instrument or medium for the poem. And uh, I admire and adore mass media. I like the TV and the computer very much. But there's something about realizing that when, when the stock market went down, I got to read on television, Frost's Provide, Provide. <laughs> yes. And when I say, better to go down dignified with bought <laughs> friendship at your side than none at all, provide, provide, my breath and my larynx and mouth, that's Robert Frost's medium. Yeah. And I think that aspect of poetry, that on the one hand it is public, it uses words, which are like quarters and dollar bills, people use them and exchange them all day long. It also is very intimate because it's not an actor's body, it's not the poet with a great personality reading it aloud, it's whoever chooses to say, Further in summer than the birds. Yeah. 
or once out of nature, I shall never take my bodily form from any natural thing. And that person, reading it to one other person, or muttering it aloud to herself in a car, that person is the medium. And in the presence of mass media, I think we increasingly crave um, something that is great, but also on an individual and human scale. Mm. Let me just mention something about you, because you'd call me about this, and I couldn't do it. But you went out and had people read, select and read their favorite poem. And it had to do with people from all walks of life. Yes. Uh, and that I, there is now a book, this America's book, Favorite Poems. There are 200 Americans poems. American's Favorite Poems. Yes, Americans' Favorite Poems. There are 200 poems. Each poem is accompanied by what I think are quite extraordinary letters from ditch diggers and parole officers and optometrists and circus acrobats and librarians uh, saying people not within our world but from various social and ethnic and age and geographical categories saying very pertinent, very moving things about poems. And we've now shot the first 50 videos of these people. Uh, the News Hour with Jim Lehrer has shown a couple. We've gotten yeah. a lot of letters, letters in response. And um, I think it justifies this notion that part of what it is about poetry is that it gets into you. Yeah. You can see a person read a poem. I can't see you listen to music or watch a play. I can see your face yeah. while you're doing it. But if you read a poem aloud, I'm seeing you experience the poem. And uh, I'm very proud of these videos. I, I hope we shoot some more of them. What does the technology do to this world of poetry? All right, it's your Sunday. Um, <laughs> <coughs> I've already said that in some ways I think the upsurge of interest in poetry in the country is a reaction to our love for technology. Yeah. The fact that it's a technology that's ancient and uses... <clears throat> the grunts the primate has evolved, something so fundamental, no equipment, part of its popularity. But it is true that at www.favoritepoem.org, you can see the ditch digger, as he describes himself, who lays gas lines for Boston Gas, talking very eloquently about Whitman. You can hear him read it aloud. Uh, you can hear Pov Chin, Cambodian immigrant, uh, talk about her parents seeing children their children killed in front of them, and how her anger at their overprotectiveness and her guilt about that are caught in a poem by Langston Hughes. Mm. And this is made available to a lot of people through technology. Um, the, it's kind of a medium inside a medium. As Richard says, there's the print medium that tells us what the voice will do as a medium. And the internet and these, I think, quite remarkable videos that we are showing on the news hour uh, now are use technology as a way of transmitting and preserving uh, a very fundamental uh, ancient technology. I've known Robert a long time, and he is the first poet I've known who many years ago was interested in the technologies that we now call the media. And I think you were prepared for what has happened in a way that no other poet has been. I have a kind of uh, why not try things added yeah. to the American ago. Academy of Poets was telling, uh, the Academy of American Poets was telling me yesterday, Bill Wadsworth, <coughs> who runs the thing, telling me that the, it gets eight million hits a month. And that poetry is the eighth. In fact, I have a list here. He gave me a list. He gave me a list of his eight. It runs, it runs on the web. It runs... This is the uh, Lycos search engine. Yes. The, the Lycos search engine says that it runs, poetry <laughs> runs... Number eight, it runs after Pokemon, yeah. Star Wars, wrestling, and Pamela Anderson. That's wrong. We're, 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 <laughs> poetry and actually is one ahead of Star Wars. Yeah. One but ahead of behind Star Pamela Anderson. Yeah. I think that's behind right. Pamela Anderson. It's more popular than <laughs> no, football, no baseball, golf, and the Bible. Marijuana and guns. And so there's where poetry sits, which is an astonishing thing. Astonishing Not figure. a bad place to yeah. be. Yeah. I got you some get... more questions. Let me just run this. This is from the Favorite Poem Project, since mm -hmm. you were talking about it. And this is John Doherty on what Walt Whitman's poem, Song of Myself, means to him. My name's John Doherty. I'm from Brenton, Massachusetts, 34 years old, and I'm a construction worker for the Boston Gas Company. Poetry was, was definitely intimidating initially. Uh, it just looked like a lot of words and 
that were out of order and out of place and uh, did not belong together. And that's, that's the challenge of it. It just takes a lot of reading and rereading to grasp it. The spotted hawk swoops by and accuses me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I too am not a bit tamed. I too am untranslatable. I sound my barbaric yop over the roofs of the world. The last scud of day holds back for me. It flings my likeness after the rest and true as any on the shadowed wilds. It coaxes me to the vapor in the dusk. I depart as air. I shake my white locks at the runaway sun. I effuse my flesh in eddies and drift it in lacy jags. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere waiting for you. Yeah. While we were watching that, George said to me, I was made to whisper with her uh, for Rick, by Rick Burns when he made the film about New York. Um, yes, I, uh, I'd always thought of, of Whitman as being sort of declamatory exclamation points, so, oh, ships, oh, bays, all that so forth. But he made me tone it down uh, after giving a declamatory reading. And yeah. it was interesting because he wanted me to, f to suggest that what Whitman was doing was thinking these things and musing rather than telling somebody something. So it, I've never heard it done, quite done that way. I thought it was very effective. I hope you did it as well as John Doherty. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Do you two disagree a lot? Robin you and, I, and Robert, yes, constantly, uh -huh, yes. just for constantly, yes. about. Well, I think about in uh, essence, what's it about? Well, I think I can perhaps say that Robert thinks that poetry can be and perhaps should be public, and I think poetry can be and must be private. Explain more. Well, I like to leave it a little bit ambiguous. Yeah. Well, why but, private? Private mean just between the reader and and his own. Well, Emily heart. Dickinson used to say there is a major and a minor in poetry. Shouldn't there also be a private? And I think that's she's she had the right uh, approach. And I think she's, by the way, the the poet I would like to emphasize as a private poet. There was this exchange between the two of you. <laughs> if we are to save poetry, said Richard Howard in an address excoriating the idea of celebrating National Poetry Month. We must restore poetry to that status of seclusion and even secrecy that characterizes our only authentic pleasure. To which our poet laureate, Mr. Pensky, said, I have it here if you don't, but maybe you can give me no, the go response. Ahead. Go ahead. Poetry is part of our shared communal Somewhat right after that exchange in the New York Times, uh, Richard phoned me up and was very annoyed. He said some radio station wanted to have us on debating one another. And I said I thought it was a great idea, but you should go on and take opposite sides of the position. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would argue you, for the private, you would be private you for yeah. the public. Yeah. Um, you want to read, so, read something to me? Or no? I was just checking Dickinson in the favorite poem anthology yeah. and, and looking at we have about five or six poems with about a dozen letters. Uh, one from a zookeeper in the Bronx Zoo, worked in the bird department for over eight years, who chose hope is the thing with feathers. And then we have Gladys Galvez, 10, student of Phoenix, Arizona. Pick this poem, has meaning in my life. The bird creatures are my favorite animals, etc. I have my private experience of the Dickinson poem. And part of my experience of the Dickinson poem is knowing that many, many people love her work. And reading the letters from these people make me feel that my private experience, as in many arts and pursuits, is enhanced by knowing that others share it too. But Richard is such a mean-spirited cur that he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't feel that way. <laughs> well, <laughs> this Paris Review is all that we have said it is. Um, I would think that if you um, care about poetry and if you want to know more and if you want to just experience poetry and all that uh, the enjoyment that comes not only from the poem but from the dialogue and conversation, uh, here it is. Thank you, George. Thank you so much, George. Real pleasure. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>